Imagine a time before radio, television, and even sound recordings. A time when music was experienced live in grand theaters and concert halls. A time when one man stood above all others as the king of the concert stage, John Philip Sousa. Step back in time to a Sousa concert. The air is filled with anticipation as the crowd awaits the arrival of the March King and his renowned band. With a flourish, Sousa takes his place at the podium. The band stands in formation, their instruments gleaming under the stage lights. The audience erupts in applause. The music fills the hall, a powerful and infectious rhythm that sweeps the audience off their feet. Sousa's band is known for their precision, their energy, and their ability to connect with the audience on a deep emotional level. Sousa was a master of concert programming, skillfully blending a variety of musical selections to create a dynamic and engaging experience for his audiences. His concerts typically included a mix of the following elements, classical music, popular music, original compositions, and instrumental solos. Sousa incorporated classical pieces into his repertoire, showcasing his versatility as a musician. These classical music selections often included overtures, operatic arias, and symphonic works. Sousa often arranged symphonic pieces for band, demonstrating his ability to adapt classical music for a different medium. This also allowed people going to Sousa's concerts to hear a symphonic work um, before there was recording devices available. Sousa also included popular tunes of his day, making his concerts accessible to a wider audience. These selections might include marching songs, such as his own marches, Stars and Stripes Forever, Liberty Bell were always crowd pleasers, and popular melodies. Sousa would often arrange popular songs of the time, giving them a new and exciting twist. Sousa's concerts also featured his own original compositions, showcasing his talent as a composer. These included marches, he is best known for his marches, of course, which are characterized by their energetic rhythms and catchy melodies. Often he would end um, a selection with an encore of one of his marches. Overtures. Sousa composed several overtures, including Poet and Peasant and The Gladiator. And Sousa also wrote suites based on various themes, such as Cuba Under Three Flags and the Black Horse Troops. He didn't only write marches. And then finally, instrumental solos. Sousa often featured instrumental soloists in his concerts, highlighting the talents of individual musicians who were in his band and would travel with his band across the country. These solos could be performed on a variety of instruments, including the cornet, the flute, and the saxophone, which was a relatively new instrument during Sousa's time, and he was one of the first to feature it prominently in his band. He also featured vocalists in the operatic arias, and those women in white, they were called, would travel with his band as well. By carefully selecting and arranging these different types of music, Sousa created a concert experience that was both entertaining and educational. His programming was designed to appeal to a wide range of listeners, from classical music enthusiasts to casual concert goers. The audience was captivated by the music, their faces beaming with joy. Sousa's concerts were a testament to the power of music to bring people together and to inspire the human spirit. John Philip Sousa was more than just a musician. He was a visionary, a leader, and a true entertainer. His legacy continues to inspire musicians and audiences alike even today. <laughs>